Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This is part two of my instance initialization block tutorial. I'm going to open up my web browser to javacjava.com, select menu, and then Java OOP tutorials. I'll scroll down to the instance block part two. In my instance initialization block part one tutorial, I present an example of how you can save time and optimize your code by using an instance initialization block. In this tutorial, I will explain when the instance initialization block is called and why the timing is an important thing to become familiar with. There are a few simple rules for the execution of an instance initialization block. The instance initialization block is invoked once every time an instance of a class is created. The instance initialization block is invoked directly after a call to super. Do not forget about the implicit super call if you do not explicitly put it in your constructor. Multiple instance initialization blocks execute top down. Now the following code will display the string literal, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, to the console using a mix and match of constructors and initialization blocks. Alright, let's come down here, highlight the code. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm going to move the browser off screen here. I have a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really fast by right clicking, selecting new shortcut, type in CMD next and finish. Okay, let's open that up. First thing you want to do is type in Java C, which is the Java compiler. You should see a whole bunch of stuff scroll by. If you get an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CD space backslash, CD is short for change directory, and backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory with MD called Java, and I already have it, but if you don't, it will create it for you. Change directories to the Java folder. And then I am going to make another directory called uh, instance block2. Change directories to the instance block2 folder, and then notepad instance block2 as well, dot Java. Since block2.java is the name of my source code file. Okay, control V to paste or right click and paste. Okay, I'm going to come up here and save this. Now I've got three classes inside of here. Um, I've got child class, parent class, and instance block2. Instance block2 is where I have my main method entry point, and it is basically going to create a new child class instance and invoke the child class constructor and then once we've got a new instance we're going to use a dot operator to invoke the display message um, method. Alright with that being said I'm just going to save this and run it real quick here and then I'll step through line by line after that. Java C, let's compile this and let's run it. <coughs> okay the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. All right, let's go through this here. So, first thing we're doing is we're uh, creating a instance of the child class and invoking the child class's constructor, and it's a no argument constructor, right? Now, um, if you've been watching my tutorials on, you know, inheritance and constructors and all that, you know there is a implicitly there is a default no argument constructor here, right? with a call to super. Now child class extends parent class, right? So parent class is the super class there. So let's go ahead and just, uh, you know what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and put it in here so you can see that. So, by not having that in there, that's exactly what the compiler put in there for us. It implicitly put this in since we didn't explicitly. Now that we explicitly put it in there, let's go ahead and save this, recompile it, all right? I'll clear my screen and we'll just run it again, right? So you can see it's the exact same thing. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. All right, so. With that being said, now we can follow this a little better, right? But I left it out specifically so you'd be aware of where to look for stuff like that. So the, 
let's take an, and examine the statement real quick there. So super, right, when we call that, it just basically says, let's, um, let's find the, the super class, right, which is parent class. And you see that we have no arguments inside the parentheses here. Let's find the no argument constructor and execute it. So it comes up to parent class. This is, okay, here is the no argument constructor. <clears throat> Okay, the first statement inside of here is this, and we're passing it an integer value of 26. Now, if you've watched my inheritance and constructor and this tutorials, you'll know that this basically says, okay, let's go ahead and find a constructor within this class that matches the signature here, right, of an int type. And here it is. Here's another constructor right here with an int signature on it, right? We're passing pointless var, doing nothing with it there. We just wanted to go ahead and invoke this particular <coughs> uh, constructor. So now, now by the way, this is not completed yet, right? Um, it's just invoked this one, but it's kind of waiting for it to complete its little chain of events here. So inside of um, this one here, I'm also calling this and I'm looking for one with a constructor with a signature of a string value. Okay, and I'm passing it the argument of huh. Now this will not complete until we get uh, until we get back to this in just a second here. Now we've found it. Okay, so here's a here's another constructor, right? That takes a string, matches the signature there. So now the first call to super basically. Um, you know, we don't have any extends up here, but if you've been watching my tutorial, you know this, uh, this extends object. Object class is the granddaddy of them all. So anyway, so then it passes that on to that. Now once the object class has done its little constructing thing, then, on, then and only then will we actually, this, this semicolon, actually finish the statement. Okay, now at this point, what will happen is it will go ahead and um, execute all of the instance initialization blocks in the order that they are. So here's one right here, right? So this will print out to the console the space, and then oh, here's another one, uh, and then that'll print out quick space. So the quick is what, where we're at right now, right? And then it will come back here and it'll say, okay, uh, brown, so it'll display that. So now we've got the quick brown space, right? And then finally, finally, this constructor is done uh, executing. It will then come back here and this semicolon says, okay, now our statement's complete. We can now display to the console fox jumps. So, so far we're at the quick brown fox jumps. And then finally, this constructor is done executing and it comes back to here and this semicolon says, okay, we're done. Now we can finally display this to the console over. So now we are at the quick brown fox jumps over. And guess what? The This class, which is our no argument um, constructor, when we come down here, we called super, now we finally finish this down here. Okay? So after that, we know that it will go ahead and check for any um, instance initialization blocks and execute them. Right? Comes into here and displays the lazy, right? Notice I'm using print, not print line, but anyway, the lazy. So we uh, came up here, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy. And then of course, the last thing that we'll do is invoke the dot display message, which will display to the console, finish it out, the dog and do a line feed. Okay, so that is basically how that works, right? Quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. All right, I am going to go ahead and close out of this. Um, oh, what did I, did I save something? Yeah, I put something in there. Let's see, let's see if I aired something out. Uh, nope, looks good. Must have just hit a space bar or something on that. Okay, so anyway, um, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that, close out of this, and leave you with some final thoughts here. So if you had trouble following this tutorial, I would recommend watching it again. Um, however, if you followed along just fine with the logic flow on this tutorial, then you are ready to proceed to my next tutorial on static initialization blocks. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.